Welcome to the fourth chapter in the Krita training for game artists. We are going to look at the game asset creation workflow and we are going to see that there are a few broad steps that professionals always follow to build a game asset, be it in 2D, be it pixel art or even in 3D. We start with a concept or concept artwork. We then move on to blocking our piece, that is to say we establish its structure. This includes the visual composition, often some basic lighting and our color palette. After the blocking phase comes the refining stage. This one is all about turning our rough piece in a both appealing and believable piece of artwork. The last step is called polishing. It is the longest of all by far. At that stage, all that's left is to focus on making every single aspect of our sprite look as good as it can be. I'll talk more about the difference between refine and polish in a moment, as it can seem a bit similar at first. But let's review each step of the process in greater details. So the first step is called the concept. Everything starts with a requirement from the game design standpoint, or maybe it is a task assigned by a client. In our example, we need an energy or a mana potion for a game, be it an RPG or a puzzle game, it doesn't matter too much at that point. The asset will appear full screen after the player completes a quest, and it will be given to him as a reward. The requirement is not part of the concept stage, but it is the base of our work. We are going to use it to outline a few keywords that will allow us to do proper research and to make the final asset look as good as possible, and especially as believable as possible. I like to break down the concept phase into two smaller steps. The first one would be learning, or you can think about it as research or analysis. We are going to talk a bit more about it in a second. And the second step is thumbnailing, coming up with unique visual ideas and sketches. First of all, let me drop in that the concept phase doesn't have to take too much of your time, but it is the most essential step in the whole pipeline, the one every other step is most affected by. In the learning phase, you are going to observe and dissect references. You can extract words to give your item a unique identity or some simple backstory. It's also a good occasion to observe the lighting, the colors, the details of your reference pictures. In our case, it could be bottles, potion flasks, corks, and all sorts of things. Then, thumbnailing is all about generating ideas with quick sketches or paintings and keeping the ones that you like, throwing away the ones that you don't like. It also serves as a mental warm-up. It allows you to take bad ideas out of your mind at the start of the day to hopefully come with more original designs as you progress. It may not sound like it, but this step is really brain-intensive. It actually can eat up all of your energy if you try to come up with new ideas all day long. That is why we treat it as a unique step of its own that comes at the start of the workflow. We do the design, we can thereafter focus on different aspects of our art, like focus on the fundamentals and the art composition once we have the actual idea and the story of the item out of the way. Once that you have one or a handful of designs that you like, it is time to build the actual game asset. In the blocking phase, the focus is going to be all on proportions, colors, and base lighting. Blocking is the foundation we will build upon to create our final sprite. If you mess up the blocking, often the final piece will look bad as well. So you really want to be careful at that stage as well, as everything that comes after it builds on top of it. There are a few different approaches to making your blocking. Some people like to paint freely and directly on the canvas on a single layer and to clean up afterwards. That is especially true for people who have a background in illustration, for instance. This can also be true with people coming from a traditional background in drawing as they are used to making their sketch or their piece directly on paper with a pencil, for instance. 
I personally prefer to create sharp silhouettes and to split them on multiple layers for gameplay related assets. This can be items, characters, anything that's going to be sharp on the screen. And I leave that free painting approach for painterly backgrounds. Doing this allows you to use the program's full potential to control the edges of your sprite much more easily. And this is something that might feel very natural for people who are used to working with vector programs like Illustrator, Affinity Designer or Inkscape for instance. In a few videos I will show you how to do that in practice with Krita and I'll try to show you the method I've come up with which to me is one of the fastest I've found to produce game assets in a game jam or uh, quickly for clients. The next big step is refining, and as I said, it is not to be mixed up with polishing. They are quite different. In the refining stage, you will still take decisions about the fundamental aspects of your creation, be it its form, its lighting, its material. In the refining stage, you add definition to your piece, up to the point where it looks really good. You are meant to take the structure you established, your blocking and to turn it into a picture that looks somewhat finished. This is my favorite step as you really get to see your game asset come to life. It doesn't take that much time to take a sprite from the blocking to the polishing stage. You will see that in the dedicated video. At that point you still have the opportunity to tweak your asset's shape, lighting and material a bit but you generally want to build upon what you did in the blocking. And then comes polishing. I place the border between refine and polish where you can stop to think about the big picture, about the composition of your piece all the time, and you can start to focus on smaller chunks of your artwork. When basically all you have left is to smooth out the shading in some areas and add small details everywhere, this is polishing. Don't be mistaken though, this is the longest step of the process and by far it might take more than half of the creation time. It depends on the type of game asset you're working on and the type of project, but it will take at least one third of the creation time when you are working for a client in my experience on mobile games. For illustrations at least half of the production time up to 90%. The more you move forward in the creation workflow, the less you have to think about your piece, simply because the foundations are all there. During the polishing phase, you can put some nice music in the background and completely get into your painting. You will see that you don't have to think as much as before. That said, we're done with the overview of the game asset creation process. In the next video, we'll do our research to create as believable of a potion as we can for our game world.